Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery from Funi. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got. Okay, when you first open the box, you will see, oh my gosh, a user's manual and a Bluetooth user's manual. Uh, okay, these user's manuals um, are the exact same user's manual as the last battery I just reviewed. So I wonder if the BMS and all the settings are exactly the same as well. But you'll see that there are uh, sections of styrofoam in here and this battery is actually packaged very well. All right, got a little bit of plastic on there. All right, and this battery is very simple. Uh, it says FUNY right there, LiPo 4, lithium iron phosphate deep cycle battery, 12 volts marked, 100 amp hours is marked. And then it has a little bit of protection stuff on the back of what not to do with this battery. This is all looking very familiar actually. It shows the model, the uh, energy capacity, nominal voltage. And right here is the, uh, the MAC address of the Bluetooth. So when you look at your list, you could find it by using these MAC address numbers right here. All right, this is your group 31 size battery. So it's going to be 12.8 inches across by 8.4 inches tall and 6.8 inches deep. And it weighs in at 23.7 pounds. All right, it also has this nylon strap that you can easily take right off just by doing that, no big deal. And the terminal bolts are already on the terminals. And they are uh, the bolt type. They don't have the screwdriver uh, uh, part of it at all. So you're gonna have to use a socket wrench or just some sort of wrench to get them off. And you're gonna need a 9 16 uh, wrench in order to get these off. And make sure you don't use something that's long enough that can touch both of these together because that'd be a dead short and you'll get a good zap on that. If you have the option, you really wanna get insulated tools. Okay, I believe these are pure copper studs and these are copper bolts. The one thing I don't like already is there's no washers and there's no like split or lock washers on here. So I would be afraid that, uh, that my connections would loosen over time uh, because they don't have that extra fitting. Okay, so when you first receive your battery, the first thing you should do is check the voltage of the battery to make sure that it is working properly right out of the box. Now, typically, the batteries I review, when I pull them out of the box, they are right around 50%, and that is a standing voltage of around 13.1 to 13.2 volts. All right, and this one is... 13.18 so that is exactly where it should be when you receive it the next thing you should do is you should go ahead and charge this up all the way to hundred percent and that is right around 14.4 volts give or take 0.2 volts so between 14.2 and 14.6 volts is a nice full charge and before I forget a little bit about this battery the BMS inside says that it can do a hundred amps of continuous discharge and charge and it could also do a 400 amp surge, but it doesn't say anything about what's gonna happen between 100 max constant and that 400 amp surge. So I'll be interested to see what happens there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and charge this thing up to 100% using a 20 amp lithium iron phosphate charger. And then I will go ahead and perform a capacity test just to make sure that I got the 100 amp hours that we're gonna be paying for. All right, well, the capacity test for the FUNY 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery is finished. And you can see that at the very beginning in the first 5% of the battery, it is still at 12.98, which is uh, a little bit higher uh, than the batteries that I've been testing recently. It usually drops down to about 12.7 to 12.8. So that's not bad by any means whatsoever. 
and uh, and it stays at that level. I mean, it stays at 12.9 all the way up to about 35 percent of the of the capacity of the battery, which is which is pretty good. And then at the 95th percentile, we're still at 12.2 volts. So uh, this battery is uh, on the on the higher end of the voltage, which is not bad at all. And then after 95%, you can see that between 95 and 98, it drops, you know, a half a volt, uh, and then it just drops from there. So anything after 95%, the battery is pretty much going to be dead real soon. But when it comes to the capacity, you can see that the capacity is 103.37 amp hours. So uh, about 3% over what they're stating on their on their spec sheet. So everything passed this with no problem whatsoever. So we're going to go ahead and start the high amperage test. All right, so let's go ahead and start the high amperage test. Let me show you what's going on behind me. All right, what we have is the uh, Funi uh, 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. We also have a voltmeter right here. It is currently 13.34 volts and we have an amp clamp and right now it is drawing about one amp and that is because of this 5000 watt pure sine wave inverter from MX Moonfree which will be powering the whole test. Uh, we do have our timer right here which we'll be using for the test. Uh, we have a 1200 watt heat gun. We have a uh, 1000 watt um, hot plate from Elite Gourmet. We have an 1100 watt griddler. And we have a, a variable wattage, but up to 1300 watts of a new wave. And we also have the app that comes with this battery. Like I showed before, uh, it does come with this little uh, Bluetooth user's manual right here. And it's just like one page and it tells you uh, which app you need to download. And you just have to enable your Bluetooth and your GPS. Don't forget to do that. And then you will find the battery in the device list you will connect to it and uh, it will bring up this information which I'll go ahead and put on the screen right now. And what's nice about this app is it does show you all the vital information about this battery. You know, it shows you the state of charge. It shows you the voltage of the battery. It will also show you the amperage going in and out of the battery. It will also tell you the state of the battery, which means like if charging is enabled or discharging is enabled. It will also show if there are any protections in place uh, at that time so if we have a high amperage event which I hope we'll have hopefully it will show it on the app so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and run a hundred amps of discharge for five minutes just to make sure it doesn't have any problems and then after that we're gonna start stepping it up because it says that it is 100 amp max continuous but it also says it has a 400 amp max surge for one second so I want to know what happens between that 100 amp max continuous and the 400 amp surge. So that's why we're going to step it up to see if there's any protections in between those two ranges. So let's begin. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn on this heat gun. And that will give us right around 106 to 107 amps, as you can see right there. On the, on the app, you can also see that the current is 104 amps. Uh, the voltage right here does say that the voltage is 12.27 and on the app it does say that the voltage is 12.58 so there is a little bit of a discrepancy between the two readings but let's go ahead and start this timer like I said I'll let it run for five minutes and I'll let you know what the results are when we get back all right, well, as you can see, it's a little over five minutes and this battery has been pulling 100 amps continuous without any issue whatsoever. So let's go ahead and bump it up to 200 amps and see what happens. Now, hopefully after like, I don't know, 15 or 30 seconds, the battery shuts off. But let's go ahead and try it. All right, I'm gonna do another 1,000 watts with the Elite Gourmet, here we go. There we go. All right, the app shows that we're pulling 199 amps and the amp clamp shows a 206 amps. Perfect. And it shut off. And you can see on the app that uh, the discharging MOSFET has turned off 
and it shows that there has been an overcurrent protection. And now, as you can see, the, uh, the battery has actually clicked back on, the protection's turned off, and now we're ready to go again. So what I wanna know is 200 amps, uh, that was a bit. I wanna know if it's gonna shut off when you push like 160 or 170 amps, uh, if it does the same thing. So let's go ahead and turn on the 100. Let's go ahead and push 100 amps right now. So we're back up to 106. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn on the new wave for 600 watts. And we'll see how long that stays. We'll start it at 720. There we go, 720. It started. We are pulling 165 amps. And it shuts off after 10 seconds. And then the battery turns back on about 30 seconds later. So I would consider this a huge pass. But the one thing I do want to know is what the surge can do. I'm going to go ahead and start up my shopsmith with this battery because this shopsmith can easily pull 400 amps when it's trying to start. So let's go ahead and set this up and see if the battery will start it up. All right, well, I got my ShopSmith plugged in, and here is the, uh, I don't know, I'll put the app somewhere around here, so that way you can see the amperage. I don't know if it's gonna capture anything, but I do have my amp clamp set to uh, capture the maximum amperage draw, and we're gonna see if this thing can do it. So let's go ahead and start it. Three, two, one, start. Oh, it almost started it. And I wasn't able to look at the app, but I do know that it, it drew 377 amps before this thing shut off. And I would say that it tried to start for about a second, but this thing takes longer than a second uh, to start up, so that's why the battery couldn't do it. And that's perfect because that's the kind of protection that you want. You don't want your battery to run, if it has a max continuous of 100 amps, you don't want it to run at 150 or 200 amps for minutes at a time. The, the internals are not made to do that. Uh, you, the, the wiring inside could start melting, your MOSFETs could start getting way too hot, I mean the solder points could actually melt. It could be a disaster. So that's why you wanna have a battery that has those protections in place. So now that we know that the high amperage works actually perfectly, we're gonna go ahead and put it in a uh, cooler to see if the low temperature charging protection works. So I'm going to put it in my Iceco portable refrigerator and I'm going to set it for like 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like but two or three degrees below zero when it comes to Celsius. And we're just going to make sure that that battery is as close to the freezing point as possible and then we'll try to charge it. All right, well, I've had this Funi 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery in this Ico refrigerator for the past 26 hours, just to make sure that it is below freezing. Now, if you look at the app, you can see that the temperature of the BMS, it shows 27.5 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 2.5 degrees Celsius, which should be below the, uh, the cold temperature charging protection level. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out of this cooler and put it right onto this Latime 20 amp lithium iron phosphate charger. Right now you can see that it is blinking green. That means it's on standby. Uh, what will happen is once I connect it, it will go to a solid red, but it should only do it for like one or two seconds and then it will go to a solid green. Uh, that's because the battery is telling the charger to shut off. So let's go ahead and pull it out and test it. All right, it's charging. And it shut off. That is perfect. Uh, it actually went on for like two or three seconds, but I still think that's just fine. And you can also see on the app that it shows that the charging did shut off and that the low temperature, or I guess it would, I guess it's called the under temperature protection for charging has been turned on. So what did I think of the Funi 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery? Well, I have nothing to complain about. It passed capacity. I think it gave us like over 103 amp hours, which is good. 
uh, when it came to the high amperage testing, it, uh, it worked perfectly. Uh, it, it was able to do 100 amps of continuous charge with no problem whatsoever. Um, and it was also able to get pretty close to that 400 amp uh, max before it shut off, which is good. So I'm glad that they've got this programmed exactly the way that it should be. So if you have any questions about the FUNY 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item and everything else I used in my description, just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.